And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One! You huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, Weed or Rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Top with fruit, like, say, sliced bananas, add milk or cream and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear, but fast. <coughs> When Rex Dryden entered the office of the Dryden Mining Company with Jake and Ben, John Dryden was slumped over his desk, a bullet through his back. Rex walked to his brother's side, pulled him upright in the chair by the shoulder of his coat, and listened to his heart. After a moment, he allowed the body to drop back to the desk. Is he dead? Yes. You had drilled him clean, boss. It would have been hard to miss. Nobody could have heard the shot in this storm. Nevertheless, we must make it look like a robbery. Get all the gold in the safe, Ben. Okay. Do we, uh, do we just leave him here? Of course. Let someone else find him. Boss! Just heard something in the next room. So did I. It sounded like a window. Hurry. Hey, it's a man. He's trying to get out. Well, stop him. All right, Joe. I got you covered. Come back here. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Come on. Into the other room. I never saw him before, boss. He don't work anywhere around here. No, no, no. Hello, Judge. Let me go. You're not going to do that, are you? Please let me go. Well, I may, Judge. Hey, what are you talking about? I always like to have an ace in the hole. But he must have seen. Judge, you shot my brother. No, no. Oh, you know that isn't true. I was standing over there by the stove, and afterwards I saw your face at the window. I, I saw your gun. I'll take care of it. Easy, Ben. There's no need to get worried. I've known Judd for a long time, and he doesn't have the nerve of a coyote. <laughs> Do you, Judd? I, I don't want any trouble. Just let me go. Search him, Jake. Huh? Go on, search him. Okay. Uh, no gun. I didn't think there would be. Well, here's a bag of gold, dust. This is mine. Give it to me. Sure. <laughs> this is our thought. Dryden Mining Company stamped on it. John gave me that. And three of us, Judd. We're ready to swear that we found this dust on you. That's the truth. We're also ready to swear that we found this gun on you. No, With no. one shot fired from it. Uh, you can't do a thing like that, Rex. Not to me. I was the one who gave you and John your start. Remember that? <laughs> I, I won't say anything, I swear. <laughs> Just let me go. Uh, you won't say anything, Judd. Or you'll hang for murder. Oh, no, no, no. Here. Take the gold. What? what? Take it. And this gun, too. Yeah. I didn't have I'm any... giving you a chance to clear out. You are? Tonight, right away. I'll keep your mouth shut and nothing will happen to you. Thanks, Rex. I, I won't say anything. I swear. Are you sure you were right to let him go, boss? Oh, he won't talk. In case anything happens, he's our ace in the hole. We can frame him easy. I don't see why he didn't go through with it. I'll tell you. It's safer all around for the verdict to be murder by a person or persons unknown. 
And that was how the murder of John Dryden appeared in the records of the Northwest Mounted Police over three months later. One of the few unsolved crimes in the territory. Sergeant Preston hadn't worked on the case. But one night, while returning from a northern patrol, he made his camp on the banks of the frozen Klondike near the mouth of Dryden Creek. Travel had been slow. A Chinook had been blowing for several days, and the ice on the Klondike was soft. There were even patches of open water, and the overcast sky gave more promise of rain than snow. The sergeant was just preparing to climb into his sleeping bag when he heard a team approaching from the direction of Dryden Creek. Yes, King. Someone traveling pretty late and fast, too. That's dangerous in this light with the ice the way it is. The sled flashed by the sergeant's camp, a dark blur. The sergeant shouted a warning. Hold up! You're going to run into trouble! But the sled continued on its way. And a few minutes later, an ominous cracking sound through the stillness of the night. Driver's gone through. Come on, boy. As the sergeant ran, he could see what had happened. A stretch of ice, weakened by the thaw, had been strong enough to hold up the dog team. But the heavy sled had broken through. And now the driver was struggling to keep afloat in the icy water. We're coming. When the sergeant reached him, he was clinging to the unbroken ice, unable to lift himself out of the water. The sergeant lay down on the ice. Here, take my hand. I'll try. I've got you. Go on, King. Grab hold of his parka. Oh, boy. That's it. Hold on. The driver, a young man, hardly more than a boy, was pulled to safety. And a few minutes later, he had taken off his wet clothes and with blankets wrapped around him, was huddled close to the sergeant's campfire. Here's some hot tea. Drink it. Thanks, uh, I just noticed a uniform under your parka. You belong to the force. Yes, Sergeant Preston. I'm I'm Bill Dryden. Oh, uh, does your father own the Dryden Mining Company? No. My mother and my uncle. My father was murdered three months ago. Murdered? What? You mean to say the police don't even know about it? Well, I'm sure they do, Bill. I don't, because I spent the last three months above the Arctic Circle. Oh, I'm sorry. They haven't caught the man who killed your father? No. I was down in the States when it happened, going to school. I've only been back a couple of weeks. Everybody seems to have forgotten about it. Nobody's doing anything. That doesn't sound like the Northwest Mounted. I'm not exactly blaming the force. I realize they didn't have any clues to work on. But I'm not forgetting. And I think I found something now. I was on my way to Dawson tonight. You found something? It changes all my ideas. I thought my uncle had killed Dad. Your uncle? Killed his own brother? There were reasons why he might have. The people on the bench claims have to buy water from us. Uncle Rex wants to charge him so much he'll be forced to sell out. Dad wouldn't have stood for that. But my uncle finds it very easy to influence my mother. A difference of opinion about business methods is hardly a motive for murder. And it wouldn't be for most people. All right. I know I shouldn't be talking about Rex this way. It's just a personal resentment between us. And I shouldn't be talking about that either. I was wrong. You said you'd found something. Yeah, a letter. Will you hand me my money belt? Mm, surely. Yeah. This is supposed to be waterproof. I hope it is. Oh, yeah. Read this, Sergeant. From Judd Evans. Do you know Evans? No. Do you? He's an old prospector. I've met him in Dawson. Dad had agreed to lend him money. And he wrote that he'd be at the creek on November 10th. Well, that's about all. What makes the letter so important? He needed money. He'd be sure to come. One would think so. Sergeant, it was on the evening of November 10th that Dad was killed. I see. And the safe in the office was open. Did anyone see Judd Evans around the company buildings? No. But that's easily explained. There was a terrific storm that night. He came. He found Dad in the office alone. Dad opened the safe to give him some money. Judge shot him and took all there was. Doesn't it make sense? The letter should be investigated at any rate. Will you do it? Of course. I'll ask to be assigned to the case, Bill. And don't worry, Judd will be found. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. For well, the time being, Bill, keep quiet and wait. You'll be hearing from me soon. Bill started for home as soon as his clothes were dry. But it was nearly two o'clock before he reached the cabin where he lived with his mother. There was a lamp burning in the living room. When he opened the front door, it was his uncle who greeted him. Well, where have you been? I left the note for Mother. Bill, you've come back. That's right. Then you didn't start out for Dawson after all. I I started out all right. Whatever put such a crazy notion into your head? I had some business to attend to. But I found someone else to take care of it for me. What, what 
sort of business. You owe your mother a complete explanation. I'm sorry. I, I can't say anything more. Please, Bill, what's wrong with you? Tell me. You'll find out soon enough. And so will Uncle Rex. Why are you so antagonistic to me, my boy? Maybe it's because you've accepted Dad's murder so easily. It's almost as if you were glad it happened. But Bill, that's an awful thing to say. Oh, he doesn't mean it now. I do mean it. And it may interest you to know that I think we're going to find the murderer before long. I think I found the motive already. Good night. The way he talks, Rex, it sounded as if he suspected you. Yes, it did. He's home anyway. Nothing more to worry about. I'll see you in the morning now. Good night, Rex. Rex returned to his own cabin a few hundred yards upstream. And there he found Jake and Ben waiting for him. Is there anything wrong, boss? I'm not sure. There may be. What? Kid and nephew of mine. He's out to make trouble. Oh, what kind of trouble? Says he's found the motive for John's murder. Yeah? Not robbery? He's been told it was robbery. It seems to be something new he's got hold of. Any idea what it is? No. Didn't you ask him? He wouldn't talk about it. Maybe I got an idea. What? Well, I was up at Gold Flats the day before yesterday, and he was in the general store talking to that archer girl. I heard some of what he was saying. Well? He said that his father would never let you raise the water rates. He said you must be glad that John's dead. He said practically the same thing tonight. And he's right. That makes him dangerous. Yes, I am glad that John's out of the way. I'll be glad when his son is, too. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Boy, oh boy, here it is, Valentine's Day. Gee, aren't Valentine's a wonderful idea? Hmm, wonder who's at the door. Why, it's our old friend, the postman. Hey, am I glad to see you. Howdy, young fella. Boy, I, I bet you've been busy today delivering Valentine. Sure have. Got any for me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Here's a pretty special one. Oh, gee, it's real pretty. And it says, to my Valentine. That's to you, bub, from my wife. And it says here, thanks for tipping us off to those wonderful breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. My husband has been a different man ever since. That's me. You? Yep. Seems like I never used to care much for breakfast. Oh? Son, you should see me now. You mean you eat a big bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice every morning? Do I? <laughs> Why, I pour on the old milk or cream, add some fruit. You know what? What? I am the doggonest, happiest man on earth, that's what. Well, I can understand that. What's more, a postman like me works pretty hard on the go all day. You need to eat a good breakfast. Everyone does. And Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice... Furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, here's another tip. What's that? Son, variety is the spice of life. That's right. So I eat Quaker puffed wheat one day, Quaker puffed rice the next. That's a swell idea. And say, fellas and girls, why don't you do the very same thing? Buy both delicious kinds. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Those swell-tasting, ready-to-serve cereals are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Ask Mom right now to order big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice shot from guns. Now to continue our story. As soon as Sergeant Preston reached Dawson, he reported to headquarters and received permission to work on the Dryden case. That same day, he learned that Judd Evans was living in Shantytown across the Klondike River from Dawson. He and King crossed the bridge that connected the two towns and after several inquiries, located Judd's shack. The sergeant knocked on the door. Where... Judd opened it, and when he saw the sergeant, the color drained from his face and the light of fear shone in his eyes. Yes? Remember me, Judd? I'm Sergeant Preston. Where? 
I remember you. May I come in? I guess so. One king. <laughs> it's just the bench to sit down. Suppose you take it, then. Oh, no, no. Please. No. All right. What do you want here? Did you know John Dryden? Well, vaguely. Didn't you write this letter? I guess so. Let me read a few lines. It's a wonderful thing, John, to find that some people know what gratitude is. But from the time you were a kid, I knew you had the right stuff in you. Do you still say vaguely? <laughs> it was a long time ago in Nevada when... John was first starting out on his own. Judge, you went up to Dryden Creek the 10th of last November, didn't you? No, 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 I didn't. Tell the truth. I didn't see John. I didn't see anybody. You went up to that creek? Well, yes. What time did you get there? It was after dark. There was a blizzard that night. You're trying to make me believe you reached there and turned right around and came back? Well, practically. John Dryden gave you the money he promised in this letter. No. I don't believe you killed him, Judge. Well, you're trying to trick me. You're trying to make me talk, and I won't. I don't know anything about it. He was your friend, Judd, about the only friend you had in the world. Don't you want the man who murdered him to be punished? I don't care about that. You're young. You have the law on your side. You don't know what it is to be afraid. I'm old. I've had enough trouble in my time, and I don't want any more. You haven't done anything wrong. The law's on your side, too. Oh, yeah, Sure. But when the others start talking, you'll believe them and you'll hang me. What others? Everybody, the whole world. Judd, I'm going to take you back to Dryden Creek with me. No, you can't. I can. I'm going to take you back to the place where you were on the night of November 10th. No, no. To John Dryden's office. Oh, no, no. Get into your park. No. We're leaving right away. It was nearly 10 o'clock when the first of the mining company's buildings were reached. The sergeant inquired the way to the cabin where Bill and his mother lived. But a few minutes later, he called out to the team to stop in front of it. Go, King! Go, you husky! Oh, no. Judge, you were taking me to the office. I am, Judd. We'll be locked this time of night. We'll need someone to let us in. I don't want to see you now, little boy. Oh? Why not? What good will it do? I'm not sure. But perhaps the sight of John's widow and his son will change your mind about a lot of things. You're coming in with me. I don't know anything. Come on. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, won't you come in? And Judd, Judd Evans, after all these years. Hello, now. What brings you to Dryden Creek? You'll have to ask the sergeant about that. I have some sad news, Judd. Three months ago, Judd John Judd knows was... about that, Mrs. Dryden. That's why we're here. Is your son around? No, he isn't. Well, where can I find him? We'd like to get into the office. We'd like to have Bill with us. Sergeant, he made me promise not to say anything, but you're different. If you're investigating John's death, you have a right to know. Bill's gone up to Windy Ridge. Now what does that have to do with your husband's death? Oh, wait a minute, I have the note right here. Here it is. An Indian brought it shortly after dark tonight. Thank you. If you want to find out who killed your father... Meet me near the cave on Windy Ridge at midnight. Do you know where that is? Yes. Dangerous trail. There's no signature. You any idea who wrote this? No, none at all, Sergeant. Bill tried to find out from the Indian, but all he could say was that some man in gold flats had paid him to deliver the note. A man with a black beard. And that doesn't help much. No, it doesn't. I didn't like the sound of Windy Ridge at midnight, and I didn't want Bill to go, but I couldn't stop him. You should have. I couldn't. Why, Judd? Why shouldn't Bill have gone to Windy Ridge tonight? Sergeant, I've been a coward, I admit it. I've only been thinking of my own skin, and I convinced myself that was the right thing to do. There was no way to help John. But now they want the boy. If you don't stop him, Sergeant, they'll kill him, too. Who, Judd? Rex. Oh, no. Rex and the others, Jake and Ben. I, I saw Rex shoot. That wasn't enough for him. Now it's Bill. I'm sure he'll never come back. Judd? Stay here with the lady. You're going up there? Yes, King and I. The trail's too steep and narrow for a team. But they might be waiting for him anywhere along it. I think they'll be waiting for him at the top. If they are, we have a chance of getting there in time. Come on, King. The cave was just below the summit of the ridge. As Bill Dryden approached it, he could see a faint light glimmering in its shadowy depths. Almost there. No telling what to expect. Oh, but someone's waiting. 
It's a campfire in the cave. Hello? Hello there. Come out in. I know that voice. Well, you're right on time. But ben, what's the idea? You got the note, didn't you? What's the idea making me come way up here? I've seen you twice this afternoon. Well, I figured nobody would disturb us here. What? Have you got something to tell me or not? <laughs> well, what's so funny? You are. Do you mean this was nothing but a practical joke? It's practical, but it's no joke. Well, he hasn't got a gun. Keep him covered anyway, Jake. Th- what's Don't that? turn around. Get your hands up in the air. Better do what he says, Bill. Up with him. What do you two want? Why, nothing. We're going to tell you who killed your dad. You've been wanting to find out, haven't you? You did it. Rex hired you to do it. Wrong. He did. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're not. Let go. Be on a chance. Don't shoot Jake. I got him. My arm. It'd be a lot easier to handle with a bullet in him. That wouldn't look so good when he's found down at the bottom of the cliff. There's no sense in waiting. Put up your gun. Give me a hand. We'll toss him over right now. Okay. No, you don't. Oh, after him. Stop him. After breaking free of Ben's hole, Bill knocked Jake aside and started running down the trail. The two men were after him at once. Fifty yards from the cave, the trail dropped abruptly. The footing was icy. Bill slipped and went down. Jake and Ben reached him before he could get up, and together, in spite of his struggles, they started dragging him toward the edge of the trail and the terrible drop that yawned beyond it. That moment, a volley of shots rang out. Hey, somebody's coming. Push him over. <laughs> Captain Cover, that almost hit me. <laughs> the last desperate effort, Ben pushed the body over the edge of the trail. But Bill managed to grab hold of a rock and hang on, his feet dangling over a thousand feet of empty space. Ben and Jake took shelter close to the cliff wall and returned the fire from down the trail. It was the sergeant who was firing at them. They kept on climbing from one point of cover to another, shooting whenever Jake or Ben showed themselves. And at last, one of his shots hit Jake. Oh. Hold on your guns. You're under arrest in the name of the queen. But Ben continued to return the sergeant's fire, and Bill cried out. Help. My hands are slipping. I can't hold on anymore. Help. Quick, King, get up there. Pull him back. The great dog leaped forward at his master's command and ran toward Bill. One of them tried to take a shot at him, but a bullet from the sergeant's gun drove him back to cover. King grabbed the shoulder of Bill's pocket in his teeth and started pulling. The slippery trail was against him. It was hard to dig his feet into the ground. For a second, it seemed that if he kept his hold, Bill would pull him over the precipice. But then the dog managed to brace himself, and he redoubled his efforts. An inch, two inches. Bill grasped for a new hole on the rock and made it. King kept on pulling, and with his help, Bill was able to pull himself back to the ledge. He lay on the ground, panting. Just then, Ben showed himself once too often, and the sergeant caught him in the right arm. He shot, his gun went out of his hand and skidded along the trail. The sergeant closed in. I had enough. Yes. Don't shoot. How about your partner? He's been hit, too. You all right, Bert? Yeah. I'm fine. But they were going to throw me over the cliff. You hadn't come when you did. King hadn't given me a hand. Good work, boy. And sergeant, it wasn't Judd who killed my father. It was my uncle. I know. I expected to find him up here. Come on, give me a hand with these two. Your uncle must be arrested as soon as possible. There's no telling what he may try next. Judd and Nell Dryden were waiting for the sergeant's return. It was long after 12 when someone knocked at the door. At last... You stay here by the stove, Judd. I'll go. Rex. What's the matter? Why, nothing. I've been expecting Bill. So he's staying out late again, hmm? He won't be long now. You can't tell about that. I'd better come in and wait with you. <gasps> As Rex stepped into the living room, he saw Judd for the first time. Well, what are you doing here? I'll tell you, Rex. I met a man and he made me ashamed of being a coward. So you came back here. It wasn't my idea. I didn't want to, but I'm glad now that I did. What has he told you now? The truth, Rex. You did it. You killed John. You believe his story? Of course I believe it. I can see it in your face. What else can you see there? Cruelty, cunning, greed. You should be able to read something more. I'm not afraid of you. Neither am I. You should be. You both talk too much. I'm going to have to get rid of you the same way I got rid of John. The same way I got rid of Bill tonight. Don't be too sure of that. Oh, but in your cases, there'll be a difference. You'll simply disappear. I'll get into your parkas. I won't move from this house. If you're going to kill us, it'll have to be here, Rex. 
And there'll be evidence of murder no matter how you try to clean it up. It won't be long before Sergeant Preston gets What's back. What's that? And... It won't be long before Sergeant Preston gets back and he knows everything. In that case, I'll make it fast. Oh! Put down that gun and hey! The door burst open and Rex raised his gun. King leaped at Rex and knocked him to the floor. Rex fired, but the shot went wild. And a second later, the sergeant had twisted the gun from his hand, snapping a pair of handcuffs around his wrist. You're under arrest for the murder of your brother, John Dryden. Get him! It's all right now, Mom. It's all over. Yes, I know that, and I'm happy. It's just the relief to see you again. Oh, Bill. What happened up on the ridge? Jake and Ben were waiting for me. The sergeant and King saved my life. Oh, thank heaven. And ours, too. You're not still afraid to testify against this man, are you, Jen? I'll never be afraid again after tonight. Then we'll take all three of them to Dawson tomorrow morning. They'll stand trial for murder and pay the penalty for what they've done. <laughs> yes, King? With these criminals on their way to jail, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. The packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your family's guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Now, listen carefully. You'll hear it. You'll hear it right on this program. Fellows and girls, you're in for the surprise offer of a lifetime. You'll hear it on this program real soon. Don't miss out. You listeners are going to get in on something big, and it's coming any day now. So be on hand. Be listening. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of Yukon Incorporated, are created, produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from gun. Listen Wednesday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Double Cross Creek. We were driving through a blizzard when we saw the light shining from the old deserted dance hall. When King and I decided to investigate, we thought we'd find a traveler who was camping there for the night. Instead, we found mystery. Mystery and the threat of sudden death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.